There are certain kinds of movies and television shows that like to embrace a certain trope, the abandoned city. Think of things like The Walking Dead, I Am Legend, or other post-apocalyptic films and shows that feature a hero or other characters walking into an empty city and being creeped out that no one is there. While that may sound like something that wouldn't happen on Earth right now, you'd actually be wrong about that. There are plenty of abandoned cities all over the world, and some of them you can actually visit. Here now are the 20 largest abandoned cities on Earth. Number 20. Hashima Island For our first stop, we head to Japan, and this might throw some of you off because, you know, Japan's not only a busy nation, but at times their cities can be some of the most densely populated places in the world. But you need to remember that Japan isn't just a singular island. It has many extensions of itself in the form of other islands that are both inhabited and not. One of them happens just to be Hashima Island. You'll find Hashima Island about nine miles from the famed city of Nagasaki, and if you were to go there now, you'll see that it is indeed abandoned, even though the remains of humanity itself are still on display for all to see. Hashima functioned as a coal facility from 1887 up until 1974, thus giving it a purpose and allowing people on the island to build it up into what you can tell was a thriving place for a time. It also should be noted that during World War II, the Japanese would would use Hashima Island as a prison camp, and at least 1,000 people died there while doing forced labor. Later on though, as many may have guessed, the coal reserves then began to deplete and petroleum began replacing coal. The mines would then be shut down and the people simply left. After all, there was no more work to do and thus no reason to stay. And with the complete exodus, the city actually remains. Its hollow shell of its former glory and nature has taken over in various ways. It was later dubbed a UNESCO World Heritage Historical Site in 2015, and groups of visitors can be taken on tours. It's also been featured in films like James Bond Skyfall. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Kangbashi District Now you may think that most of the cities on the list are ones that had a purpose and were then abandoned and went away, much like our last entry. However, that's not always the case, such as with China and the Kangbashi District. This abandoned place was meant to be a new home for many, and then things just kept happening that prevented that. You see, China, for a while, has been trying to reinvent its areas in order to not only contain their booming population, but to modernize itself in the eyes of the world, and for the most part, it's been a success. However, in 2003, after the boom of a certain area, they decided to make the Kanbashi district, which would house about one million people and be another popular place for people to go to in China. The catch though, they didn't actually put it near a good spot, but instead placed it out in the desert. Clearly someone has a dry sense of humor. The initial plan was for the residents of the older drought-prone Dongsheng to migrate en masse to the new city, which sat wedged between two massive reservoirs and had more than enough water. Can you guess what would happen next though? Well, yeah, the people didn't go. In fact, at the time of a key spot of construction ending, only 70,000 people had gone, and that time the building of the district stalled to where they could only house about 300,000. And as I just noted, it didn't happen at all. A series of other events would lead to the project spiraling out of control, and China is still waiting for people to come in. There are some people there, but in the grand space of it all, it really does look abandoned as you walk the streets. Number 18. Kennecott on one hand, Kennecott, Alaska is a town that's within a national park, and it also happens to be the biggest national park in the United States, even bigger than Yellowstone. But on the other hand, this is yet another place that's a shell of its former self, and for a reason that you're already familiar with, the resources going away. But it wasn't coal that was the major resource, rather it would be copper, 
and not just a little bit of copper, but a whole lot of it. Once the copper began to be found in spades, people from all over North America were trying to get their hands on it and get their own piece of the pie. They even had investors in the form of JP Morgan setting up shop at one time, so that's pretty cool. Over $200 million worth of copper ore would be found within the area itself, and this naturally lent to the town that the money needed to expand. However, when the ore dried up in the 1930s, the mine would then be shut down, and the decades then began to show themselves in terms of decay and overgrowth that came about. Now, while it is part of a national park, the city as a whole, and all that was once flourishing within it, have now become abandoned. Sadly, you'll find all kinds of places like this around the world, and I'll be detailing more of them later in the list. Number 17. Orador Sorglani our next story is not one to laugh at, and I mean it, because I'm talking about a small village in France known as Orador sur -Glani. This particular village was an abandoned place that has a very tragic story, one that ties into World War II. The village wasn't actually that big, nor did it have a lot of people. In fact, it only had about 650. But on the 10th of June in 1944, this village would be destroyed. 642 people who were living in the village, which included women and children, were massacred by German forces, and only eight people survived the onslaught that arrived. Sadly, though, it didn't stop there. Though the eight people survived, their homes did not, and the German forces then went to work upon looting everything that they could, and what they couldn't take for themselves, they then burned, which included the homes of those that they had just murdered. Arguably, the greatest tragedy, though, is not only the death of the people in the burning village, but that there's no clear reason why German forces did this at all. Now, I say because by all accounts, there was no reason to do this, and no one can agree as to why this batch of Germans went after this specific village in France. Plus, just look at the date of the attack. This was about a week after D-Day when the Allied forces broke through the German lines in France and were put on their heels. So why would they be ransacking the village when there were more important things to do? I don't know, and now this abandoned village is a testament to what occurs when war doesn't make any sense and it just becomes pure violence. Number 16. Ashgabat, Turkmenistan we now head to Turkmenistan, where a place that was technically not empty, unlike the China district from before, but it's not exactly what you would call populated or as basic as you may think in Ashgabat. Because there's the thing, Ashgabat Turkmenistan is the capital of the country. So you'd think that this city, which is adorned with marble and fountains and other things, would have all kinds of people living within it, except it's not really. The population of the city is about 700,000, so that would be enough to make it very much populated if they actually lived within the city limits. Instead, everyone lives in the suburbs outside of the city, and thus the city is technically abandoned. Now, to be clear, there are people who visit Ashgabat, Turkmenistan, but if you don't look at the city in the right way, you'll never see them. And why is that? Well, it's hot in the city, and so people don't actually walk around that much there. Two, the people of Turkmenistan apparently don't want their marble exteriors within their capital dirtied, and thus they've made rear entrances that most people enter in via an unwritten rule, and so on and so forth. It also doesn't help that that place isn't built in a certain way to truly house the population, so when you visit, you might not see people hanging around a lot, but they are there at times, mostly, the things that people build to stand out from the crowd, right? Number 15. Pripyat, Ukraine Without a doubt one of the most famous abandoned cities in the world, Pripyat, Ukraine is a staunch and harrowing reminder of what can happen when a nuclear reactor goes bad and everything within its range can be infected by radiation. Yes, this is indeed the city that was next to the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the one that had a meltdown that poured untold amounts of radiation into the air and throughout the surrounding areas. The tragedy here, though, is not only the meltdown itself, it's that the city was actually a thriving city at one point in time. It even got rewarded for its booming population by getting an amusement park built nearby, but that never opened because of the disaster. 
In terms of the numbers, over 50,000 people within the city limits would be evacuated due to the dangers of the radiation that was oncoming. They were not able to take their valuables, and so the abandoned city still has the remains of all that was once there. Now you may think that given how it's been decades since Chernobyl, that people could return to the place, right? Well, living there would be risky at best. You see, because radiation is something that does fade away over time, but because of how much that there was poured out, the city has to be cordoned off in order to keep people safe. And since it's been decades since the disaster, the city has gotten overgrown with vegetation and who knows what else. Could it be brought back to life one day? Well, perhaps, but it would take quite the large effort. Number 14. Homenskop, Namibia we now head to Africa, where another boom town absolutely went bust and nature would take over in a rather hilarious way. Kolmenskop, Namibia would be founded by Germans in the early 1900s as it was discovered that in this place were diamonds and a great deal of them. Given that the diamonds, both then and now, are one of the most valuable things that you can find, it was quite the big deal and a lot of money could be made there. Many would rush to the place, including those who felt that they could make a fortune and started to search for diamonds. As you might expect though, in the decades to follow, the town not only grew, but also prospered and all sorts of places came about as a result. But here's where that twist comes in. By the time that World War II came around, the city had one major problem. All of the diamonds were gone. That's right, the city went bust, and given that they were basically a desert town at that point, they had no reason to be there, and everyone left with a quickness. And when people leave with a quickness, nature is quick to take their place, and that means the using the power of the Namib Desert. Well, if you're confused, just look at what the place was during its boom days, and what it is now you're going to notice something very funny, mainly that the sand of the desert has not only overtaken much of the town, and many of the buildings are almost buried in it. There are tours that can take you to this place should you want to see just how sand-ridden that it's actually become. Number 13. North Brother Island there are many reasons for a place to become abandoned and stay that way, but one that you may not think about is that of being a protected island in terms of the creatures or plants that live there. That brings us to the North Brother Island, which is just off the coast of New York, and is now a bird sanctuary, meaning that no one is allowed to go there because of the wildlife. Many places put up such protections because of the size of the population, and this is one such case. However, if you look at what it was before it became a sanctuary, you're going to notice that it wasn't exactly the best place to be. The island itself was not actually populated until 1885, when Riverside Hospital set up shop. The intention of the place was to house and treat smallpox victims in isolation so that the disease could not spread, a very popular practice in the 1800s for various illnesses and diseases, and one that is very much discouraged today for various reasons in terms of how all that was handled. Now, later on, the hospital became a more general service place, treating other diseases and patients, which also included the infamous Typhoid Mary. She remained at the hospital until her death in 1938. And you think the story's over? Well, not quite. A hospital then eventually shut down in the 1940s, but the buildings were used as veteran housing and other activities, ones that resulted in abuse and deaths of many, and that's a major reason why the place was abandoned in full, and they left it to the birds, which I don't really mind, to be honest. Oh, and the island? Well, it may actually be haunted, so there is that. Number 12. Varosha, Cyprus before the division of Cyprus in 1974, Varosha was a booming resort town with skyscraping hotels, glamorous shopping districts, and sandy beaches frequently called the best in Cyprus. So you'd think that such a place would never be abandoned because all that it had to offer. Especially when you hear that certain popular celebrities from the United States and beyond would go there to help romanticize the place. But sadly, war once again ruins everything.
The Turks invaded Cyprus, and apparently had the backing of the Greek government at the time, and they also began to take control of parts of it which included Verotia. As a result, thousands fled to avoid the violence that was inevitably going to come. Their goal, though, was to actually return home when everything calmed down, and it made sense that this would be the path, as other cities have had such things occur. But the catch here is, they were never able to go back. Following the invasion, the resort was fenced and blocked off by the Turkish military and has been abandoned for decades. That's right, as it stands now, nobody but the Turkish military can enter and the place has been labeled a forbidden zone. At its peak though, Verosha had 700,000 tourists visiting every year, but now, well, it's not so much. Number 11. Plymouth Montserrat now, I've already shown you how many different cities have become abandoned, but one that I've not talked about yet is that of the way of a natural disaster, forcing people to stay away from it in one form or another. And while tornadoes, hurricanes, and even earthquakes could cause such an abandonment, I'm going to talk about a volcano that did the job for them. This would occur in Plymouth, Montserrat. Plymouth was the capital of the place, but now it's all but abandoned, and all because of an eruption that almost literally turned everything to ash. In 1995, it would be revealed that a nearby volcano was more than likely going to erupt, thus putting the entire city in danger, and two years later this prediction would come true as the volcano blew its top, covering Plymouth in 40 feet of ash. If you do visit the town now, you'll still see the ash from the volcano nearly three decades after the incident occurred. What's more, while there have been attempts to reintegrate with the area, it's a bit risky because the volcano is actually still active. And as such, if you do endeavor to go there, it has to be when the scales read that the volcano is not about to burst. This is not unlike what happened to the legendary city of Pompeii, with the only exception being that it wasn't lost to time until it was rediscovered, but rather it was buried right in front of our eyes. Number 10. Bodhi, California I've already shown you plenty of resources that created boom towns and then eventually led to them going bust, but the one that I've not yet touched upon is gold, and specifically all the towns that were abandoned after the gold rush of 1849. Many people would flock to California from all over for a chance to try and strike it rich, and as the stories note, many of them did find legendary material, but also as the stories note, once the gold was gone, people left the area in droves, and one town that was left in the dust was Bodie, California. During 1849, Bodie was still just a small town as there had not been much gold there at all. However, people did still live there and in 1876 everything would change because a major streak of gold would be discovered in the area and thus the rush for the mineral came to be. Bodie boomed as a result like many before and after it and once upon a time it actually had over 10,000 people living within its limits, a vast majority of whom were trying to get to the gold. However, just as other entries I've talked about, everything dissipates soon enough. By the end of the 19th century, the town would go into decline and would be abandoned by its people. In 1962, the town of Bodie was then turned into a historical park, so at the very least it can serve as a reminder of what was there and what happens when places like it are left to nature. Number 9. Fordlandia Gee, I wonder what this place could be named after or for. Huh, I wonder if it has to do with cars. Well, yes, I'm talking about the legendary Henry Ford, the man who helped make automobiles not only affordable but mass-produced, changing the world forever. However, Ford was never a man to see something and say, oh, well, that's good enough. He knew that rubber was vital to his car manufacturing process, and at one point in time, Brazil was the place to go and get it. So he came up with a plan to help himself out. Ford would strike a deal with the government of Brazil to get a piece of land on the banks of a certain river in exchange for a 9% share in the profits that would be generated. Ford's goal was to manufacture 38,000 tons of latex from his rubber farmstead. 
And as you may have guessed, things didn't exactly go the way that Ford had envisioned, especially in regards to how Brazil did things on their end at the time. As such, the place would be abandoned for a long time, and only recently have people begun to get back into the city that should have changed everything, but didn't. Now, I'm not saying that this was a bad idea by Ford, but it was one where he swung a bit too much and ended up missing the ball. Number 8. Thames Town, China we now head back to China, but this time around, we're not looking at a massive district, but rather a town that was actually abandoned. But why was it abandoned? Well, you could cite certain different reasons, but not unlike the district I spoke about before, it was mainly tied to how this was to lure people away from areas that were heavily populated. And like the other place, they indeed failed. What's more, Thames Town was born from an initiative called One City, Nine Towns about 20 years ago where every town was made in the image of another nation. Thames Town, for example, was a fake English town. Around $3 billion would be spent on creating a picture-perfect English town from scratch. The town would be completed in 2006, spanning an area of one square kilometer and designed to occupy a population of 10,000. It never even got close to that amount, and it it now stands as a ghost town. Number 7. Pyramiden, Norway If you go to Pyramiden, Norway, you'll find a place that resembles many of the other ghost towns on my list. They were a boom town that eventually went away, but for this one at least, it lasted a lot longer than it should have. Founded by the Swedes on a Norwegian island chain in the Arctic Ocean in 1910, the terrain would be sold to the Soviet Union in 1927. For the next 70 years, a hardy band of Soviets would mine the area for its coal deposits until word was passed down in 1998 that the operation was to be shuttered. As such, the people abandoned the place and simply moved on. But where's the twist, you may ask? Well, while nature and wildlife have taken over, it's not as obvious as other places, mainly because the climate has made it so that the man-made elements of the place can endure for much longer without any serious decay. Some even say that it would take about 500 years before the town eventually collapses. Number 6. Goldfield Ghost Town, Arizona Ah yes, another gold town, and a haunted one at that. Goldfield Ghost Town is located in Arizona, and it's stated to be one of the more popular and most haunted places in the state. The town was originally founded in 1893 after being inundated by miners who had hoped to get a taste of the gold strike in the nearby mountains. The town grew rapidly, gaining 1,500 residents during its first year, and like the other towns that I've talked about, they built up the city in order to accommodate their new lifestyle. But while other towns would last decades, this one only lasted five years before things went south and the place would then become abandoned. Now it's a ghost town, and some think in the literal sense. Number 5. Cracco, Italy we now head to a place that's a bit more exotic. The hillside ghost town of Krakow would be founded in the 8th century and sits on a cliff that's 1,312 feet off the ground. That's just a little bit high up. Now, if you can't guess, the city was empty due to various natural disasters. In 1963, many would evacuate after a landslide. Then in 72, a flood made conditions even more precarious. And in 1980, an earthquake caused the town to be abandoned in its entirety probably for the best given the luck that the place was having. As of now, the city is surrounded by a locked gate, so any visitors that want to come must book a guided tour. Thanks to a miraculously unscathed statue of the Virgin Mary, the town hosts various religious festivals throughout the year. And despite the fact that the area is a ticking time bomb, the city's been used for several films, which includes The Passion of the Christ. So at the very least, this abandoned place still does see some use. Number 4. Ragudi Vecchio, Italy Oh, you want to stay with Italy? Well, why not? 
The place known as Ragudi Vecchio was one that used to be full of people that would sing the day away, even if some of the songs they sang were a bit controversial. Not unlike their fellow Italian city, this would become a place that was forced to be abandoned due to nature. A set of floods made it virtually impossible to live there, and as such, everyone just left. After 50 years, the houses still stand for the most part, but it's obviously a whole lot more quiet. There are some who do hope to repopulate the place, but given the threat of natural disasters still, you have to wonder if that's even a realistic expectation. Number 3. Burj Al Babas, Turkey now you may hear the name Burj Al Babas and think that this was a project in the UAE, but no, it's actually about Turkey. Just as important though, the reason that this place looks like it's meant to be something special and also abandoned. It was meant to be a massive project that would house a lot of people. $200 million was to go into this housing development and set Turkey up for a lot of praise, but then the country fell into a recession and the money dried up. Everything had to stop mid-construction and as a result, the buildings are abandoned with no one to live in them. Number 2. Kelso, Scotland Kelso is another small town that is even smaller now. At one point it had just 300 people, but it was a happy set. At its height, Kelso had a primary school with three teachers, shops, sale yards, a church, hotels, and a town hall. It was a thriving community that brought people from all over the region, and then when the railway was built, the town grew even more. However, there was a problem. They were in an area that was prone to flooding, and over time the floods damaged the railway, the town, and more, and eventually it was deemed in the best interests of everyone to simply move on from the town for safety. And thus, Kelso stands abandoned. Number 1. Wittenoom, Australia now I've saved the best for last because Wittenoom, Australia is an abandoned place that I recommend you never go to ever because if you do, you'll more than likely die. The reason that this town was so popular for a time was that it was a place where you could go and mine for blue asbestos, which at the time was a major building material, but when the material would be revealed to cause health problems and other materials could be used for building without issues, the town simply became abandoned. But wait, there's more! Due to the blue asbestos being there still, and the mines, Australia made it so that you can't even find the place on the map, so if you do find it, it's upon accident, and you probably shouldn't go in any closer. That's all from the realm of large abandoned cities. Were you surprised by how many of them there are indeed abandoned in the world right now? And do you actually live near one of these places? And if you do, are you tempted to check it out? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments below. Check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.